Hello, welcome back. Um, so this is already solved as you can see because I just went through this whole question in a video and it turns out that video had a messed up audio. So the audio didn't record properly and now, uh, well, I just solved this in another one and uh, here we are. So I thought I'll just take you through it. Um, okay. So Samir buys and sells on credit. He has provided the following information. On 1st uh, January, there are opening receivables and then there are some transactions for the month. Uh, for the month, yes. Uh, actually, never mind. That's for the year. Some transactions for the year. And then it says one of the receivables, RIA, has become bankrupt and uh, Samir is not going to receive $170 that's owed to him. Um and the rest of the money Samir expects to receive. So we'll, we'll write off $170 from RIA as irrecoverable. Since irrecoverable debt is an expense, we'll debit that account and RIA will be credited because RIA are trade receivable uh, is, uh, well, not going to be receivable anymore. So our asset is falling. Here for the narrative, you have to give a reason. Uh, in this case, it's amount owed by RIA written off as irrecoverable. Uh, you may add to the fact that this is also because of the fact that she went bankrupt. Uh, secondly, state two reasons why Samir should use provision for doubtful debts account. Uh, one is to follow the principle of prudence. Let me expand on that and you should expand on that. This is not enough. Just mentioning these two points won't give you two marks. So what you can mention is follow the principle of prudence to follow the principle of prudence in order to make sure assets or trade receivables are not overstated and profit is not overstated because by accounting for provision for raffle debts you will reduce your receivables and you will also put that as an expense matching principle is where a provision is taken for the future irrecoverable debts in the current year because it belongs to the receivables of the current year so it matches the irrecoverable debts for of the current year with the current year's uh, amounts right so that's how it's matching uh, principle. Moving on, uh, well, unfortunately, as I said, uh, it was such a nice video. I did this question in about 10, 11 minutes, but then uh, so uh, it was so sad to see the, the audio, audio got messed up. Uh, okay, but I'll just take you through this. So cash sales is not going to be recorded because it's not a credit item. Sales ledger control account looks at your receivables and so cash sales do not have anything to do with your receivables. Credit sales, when you do credit sales, you will receive that amount. And by the way, the balance came from here, the opening balance. And uh, so credit sales will increase your receivables. It goes on the debit side, increase receivables means debited. Decrease receivables means credited. So we got a couple of payments here uh, from the from these transactions bank transfer and cash received so both in both the cases bank will be debit in this case so basically in both the cases cash book will be debit SLC will be credit so bank and cash there what about this one it's a sales return when sales are debited sales returns are credited in the SLCA right another way to think is it reduces your receivables so it's gonna be credited next uh, we have interest charged uh, when you charge interest to your customers, your receivables will go up, so that should be debited. And then there's contra entry. Uh, contra entry in uh, relation to SLCA and PLCA means you're not going to pay an amount and you're not going to receive that same amount. So you have to just re reduce your receivables, right? And reduce your payables. In this case, we're just dealing with SLCA, so reduce your receivables by crediting this account. So uh, on the credit side, we write PLCA because that's where the double entry is. You can write the full form of it. And next to it, you may write contra because that's what it is, contra entry. Discount allow, when you discount, when you allow discount to your customers, that will reduce your receivables by uh, 3125. So I'm gonna put that here, 3125. And don't forget, we also have these irrecoverable debts which will reduce your receivables. So that's credited. After that, uh, add up both the sides. You'll get, this is the debit side total. That's the credit side total. Credit side is smaller, so balancing figure goes there. Balance CD goes there. Um, and once you total these two, you can put the totals there. 
Of course, after balancing it, the totals will match. And then you bring down the balance BD. That's all good. Let's keep moving. Samir is concerned. Let me take you back here. You can look at this full image. Screenshot if you want to. Let's move on. Uh, Samir is concerned about his ability to pay his uh, trade payables. Okay. Uh, he's considering whether to stop allowing cash discount to his credit customers so that he will have more cash coming in. Okay. And he can pay his trade payables more easily. Now, that's such a bad idea. Uh, just to be able to pay your trade payables, you don't have to disappoint your customers. Right. Uh, there are some advantages. What are, what are the advantages? Let's see. So, uh, one is by stopping the discount allowed, he will receive a greater amount from his customers. His customers are going to pay him a greater amount, greater amount from the customers. One second, you can say it will reduce his expenses because cash discount allowed is an expense, reduce expenses, increase profit. That's like two, three points and that's enough. Okay. Reduce expenses, increase profit. And on top of that, increase the, the amount we are receiving from the customers. So that's more than enough. How is that a disadvantage? Well, it's easily a very big disadvantage. So, uh, first of all, there are better ways to raise finance to pay the payables. That's one thing. There'll be better ways to pay payables uh, from other sources of finance. Secondly, it will disappoint our credit customers and they will go to other competitors. So it will damage our reputation and goodwill with the customers and we will lose them to our competitors. That's more than enough. Two, two points on each side. And you can conclude by saying that it's not the best way to raise finance by reducing discount because that will disappoint our customers and there are better options available. The next question is just about that. What other options are available? Well, uh, he can raise cash from a bank loan, can raise cash from additional investment, additional capital introduced, and uh, a couple more if you want to, but for one mark, I've already mentioned two. You can think of others if you want to, but this is more than enough. All right, now I'm hoping this recording came out fine. Really, really hoping for that. Uh, so just see you in the next one. Bye.